A New York federal judge has declared the mass collection of phone data by the NSA is lawful. Just over a week after, a judge in Washington, D.C. ruled that Dragnet surveillance would likely be proven unconstitutional. Marina Portnoy has the details. A federal judge in New York, William Pauley, ruled Friday that protections under the Fourth Amendment do not apply to records held by third parties like phone companies. Thus, the NSA's indiscriminate and systematic collection and storage of phone records belonging to all Americans, well, that's lawful. This decision came down because the ACLU was suing to halt the NSA's bulk metadata collection program, but the federal judge granted a motion filed by the Obama administration to uh, dismiss the challenge. Now, in his ruling, Judge Pauly said that the NSA's blunt tool only works because it collects everything. Uh, during his decision, he also raised the 9-11 attacks, arguing that if the NSA's metadata collection program had been in place before September 11th, 2001, the hijackers may have been caught. Now, the ACLU has expressed disappointment and says it plans to appeal the decision. Two weeks ago, a federal judge in Washington, D.C., said the NSA's metadata program uh, most likely violated the Fourth Amendment. As part of that ruling, uh, Judge Richard Leon ordered the government to stop collecting data on two plaintiffs who brought the case against the U.S. government. We'll have to wait and see if the Supreme Court does take up the issue of the NSA's uh, very controversial metadata program. The U.S. President Barack Obama was asked to identify any specific instance in which uh, analysis of the NSA's bulk metadata collection actually stopped an imminent attack. The U.S. President could not identify one instance, or at least he did not give one example to the journalists that were asking him. Now, U.S. officials have uh, for many years asked Americans to sacrifice uh, some of their privacy in the name of security. But so far, uh, no top U.S. official can mention any danger, imminent danger, that's been thwarted through the collection of everyone's personal information. Eugene Poirier from the Anti-War Answer Coalition says the U.S. government has failed to produce any evidence that its spy technology is actually being used against terrorists. The president, if he had something, would certainly reveal it because his case has been so terribly damaging. They came out in the NSA and in front of Congress. This is the most uh, important program, and if we don't do it, then the whole world is going to collapse and terrorists will overrun the country. I mean, that's sort of the rhetoric. You know, functionally, the reality of this situation is that these individuals are, 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 are not preventing attacks, that the program are not permitting attacks. And I think that if there was something else, they would have revealed it for sure, because it's the only way to bolster their crumbling case that this mass panopticon of surveillance is something that is important. The journalist who helped Edward Snowden expose the NSA, Glenn Greenwald, shared his experiences of dealing with the mainstream media in the wake of the revelations. It was on this program called Hard Talk, and I at one point had made what I thought was the very unremarkable and uncontroversial observation that the reason why we have a free press is because national security officials routinely lie to the population in order to shield their power and to get their agenda advanced. When, when I said that, he interrupted me, and he said, I, I, I just cannot believe that you would suggest that senior officials, generals in the United States and the British government are actually making false claims to the public. How can you possibly... 